and welcome to another episode of the ZTV Sports Report, your home for all things Akron Zips Athletics. I'm your host, Megan Williams. And I'm Zach Leininger. And in today's episode, we're going to be continuing our coverage of all the fall sports. So don't go anywhere, because the ZTV Sports Report starts now. Welcome back. So, Zach, this m football team is not having the best time since the last time we spoke about them. Um, they haven't won since that game. Um, we went to South Carolina to play the Gamecocks, and that was a rough game. I don't even want to say the score of that one because it was just that bad. Um, we lost, unsurprisingly. Um, then we came back to Ohio but played at Ohio University um, against the Bobcats. Um, sadly, we also lost this one, um, 30 to 10. So, what do you have to say about this? Yeah, I mean, looking at looking into this Ohio game, um, you know, it was apparent that the Zips were trying to get back in the win column. You know, they yeah. um, two games ago won at Colgate. You know, uh, then unfortunately had to go and play. You know, a big school like South Carolina, yeah. um, which kind of derailed that momentum. So they're trying to get back on track in this game, and they were doing pretty well. You know, got a field goal in the opening drive, and then uh, defense. Uh, as has been the case this whole season, um, has been doing their job, really holding it down um, at the beginning part of the game, uh, keeping Ohio scoreless, you know, three nothing at the end of the first. And, and then they continued to keep them scoreless until middle of the second, until they scored. Um, from there, you know, the Zips answered back. Uh, a few minutes later, got their own touchdown, you know, got the momentum back. Um, un until unfortunately, you know, right, at the end, right near the end of the half, trying to hold on to that lead, they, uh, they gave it up. And Ohio just took that and ran, um, quite literally took that and ran <laughs> uh, 236 yards on the ground. Um, you know, to go along with 204, Parker Navarro had 12 for 18 in this game, near perfect um, accuracy, just kind of having his way, picking apart the defense pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, ben Finley was holding in well for most of the game uh, until, until they just weren't able to connect. Um, Ended up, you know, throwing two interceptions in this game. Oh, Negative 18 rushing yards on the ground. <laughs> uh, and it just the, the overall production was down from, you know, what we saw yeah. uh, in that Colgate game. Uh, and looking at the schedule uh, in the season, you know, on a bigger scale just overall, this was a game I, I had marked uh, as a win, yeah. a, a game that this team had to win, considering mm -hmm. that we still have Toledo to play, Northern Illinois, Buffalo, Bowling Green coming up after yeah. this. It's just like there's a few of those games that not not saying they're, they're going to lose, but they would be very tough games for them to win. Yeah. And, you know, for this team to go where I want them to go, you know, I had them winning five or six games this year. But from here, they're going to have to be near perfect uh, the rest of the way out. Yeah. Uh, and judging based on all this performance, this is not, you know, this is not a game that's going to get them, you know, tr trending in that direction, really. <laughs> um, so yeah, as you mentioned, we are playing Bowling Green next for homecoming weekend. Um, that game is, there's no good way to put it, it's going to be a mm -hmm. rough one. Bowling Green is doing amazing this season. They beat a ranked team earlier yeah. in the season. Um, imagine if we could do that, mm -hmm. that'd be cool. Um, yeah. But yeah, our guys just, I think I figured out what they need to do, Zach. They need to get more touchdowns, you know? I think that would help. You think so? Yeah, I think that would really help. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, um, points points do win you the yeah, game. So points more will be helpful. Team yeah. with the most amount of points wins. So yeah. So um, that'll be it for football. Now we are going to talk about the men's soccer team. So let's take it over to Taz, who took a look at their game against St. Francis. Hello, this is Taz with ZTB Sports Report. The Akron Zips delivered a commanding 8-0 win at First Energy Stadium, dominating from the start to finish. Mayor Escalonen opened the scoring just five minutes into the match. Akron's offense was in full force early, with Dyson Clapier adding a goal in the 21st minute. 
followed shortly by Escalon in second. By halftime, Remy Akibayad and Nathan Ferguson had also found the net, giving Akron a 5-0 lead. In the second half, Akron showed no signs of letting up. Simon Gutierrez scored a header off a well-placed free kick early in the half, and Escalon completed his hat trick with a third goal soon after. Nathan Ferguson rounded out the scoring in the 65th minute, netting his second goal of the night and capping off an 8-0 route. Akron's defense remained tight throughout the match, keeping a clean sheet and limiting their opponent's chances. Akron registered 25 shots and 13 corner kicks, demonstrating total control of the game. This emphatic performance highlights Zip's attacking strength and defense stability as they continue their impressive season. Thank you, Taz. So, Zach, this soccer team has definitely turned it around since the last time we talked about them. Um, this men's soccer team, before the St. Francis matchup, was playing their first conference game of the season against Butler. That was the most aggressive game I've seen in my life. Um, at the end, by the end of that game, we were playing 10v10 because there was a bunch of red card issues. Not what we like to see. But we ended up winning, so that's all that matters, you know. Um, with a score of 4-3, to three, that was definitely a very intense game down to the um, last minute. Um, and then coming into the St. Francis game, our guys were just obviously really ready to win again, considering they just won. This was just a really random out-of-conference game for the, the fact that we just started conference play. Um, this team, this poor St. Francis team, they came all the way from PA. Um, and when I say this was the like a scoring masterclass, I don't know how else we could have done. But um, our guys, by the end of um, by halftime, we had scored five points, which is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh, we're we're done. There's no way we're gonna score in the second half. And then we score three more. The final score of this game was eight to zero. How does that happen? Um, our guys ended up with 25 shots in all. What the heck? Like, what is happening? Um, and the last thing I need to say is good job for Emil Eskalainen. and he got three goals just himself this game. What a legend, carrying the team on his back, really. Yeah. Um, what do you need to say about this game? Yeah, I mean, you hit the nail on the head uh, <laughs> with that analysis there. They've really, um, they really have begun to turn a corner. I was a little worried for the way this team was trending, you know, uh, one, three, and three when we talked last time. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I've I had a feeling this was like the identity of this team, the culture of this team. I knew we were better than the way we were playing. Mm -hmm. I think we just kind of needed, um, you know, we needed that game to prove it to, you know, to prove it to everybody, to prove it to ourselves, you know, just boost the morale, get us back on the right track. You know, that Butler game, as you mentioned, was the perfect game to do that. You know, a big, a big powerhouse, big conference matchup. Coming out of that game was huge. And then, you know, again, uh, at a conference game here against St. Francis, um, it was it was a game um, necessary to continue to build the momentum they've had, and they did just that. Um, you said it was a masterclass, and I would have to agree. <laughs> um, Twenty five shots, um, so they were shooting at will. But I think the <laughs> I think the bigger, more impressive stat in this is they took twelve shots on goal and made eight of them. That's you ridiculous. Know, so I'm not a not a math major, but that's seventy five percent. So that's yeah. pretty that's pretty efficient. Yeah. Um, you know they were getting down there. Uh, you know getting in the right spots. And I think that was one of the things that they were lacking um, previously was like there was a lot of, um, you know, a lot of crossers over the middle, mm -hmm. especially on the corners. Um, and just a lot of, you know, miscommunication not being in the right spot. Yeah. You know, overshooting the ball, undershooting the ball, you know, misheading the shot. Um, just uh, not, just really disconnected overall. Yeah. So they really needed to bring it together. Um, and, you know, Along with Eskalainen, um, Nathan Ferguson got some really good minutes in this game. Yeah. He had he had two on uh, you know, perfect two shots on the goal, two goals on four shots. Uh, he nearly had a hat trick in that game. Yeah, if he, he had did. A little bit more time, he would have yeah. had a hat trick. Um, you know, Dyson Claypier got back in this game. Uh, Remy, uh, you know, freshman this year, he uh, he's really stepped up, came in strong. Of course, um, yes. And then Simon Guardiero, uh, you know. Hasn't got a ton of playing time this year, but he made mm -hmm. um, he made sure to um, take full advantage of those minutes. And you know, just going back to what I mentioned, this was exactly what they needed. Yes, just building that sure. confidence, building that continuity is going to be huge moving forward in this season. Because um, as we get deeper, 
Um, this is the point of the season where it really matters, um, and that's something that I, I know Embic has emphasized to his team. You know, just getting into this point of the season where these are must-win games. Mm -hmm. What happens outside of conference play um, at this point doesn't matter. It's pretty much a clean slate. Yeah. Because um, these games are going to, you know, uh, you know, dictate who makes the conference tournament, and then from there, obviously, you got to make that conference tournament um, to make the NCAA tournament, unless you're really good, but. We're not having quite that season, so we're going to have yeah. to focus on the conference. Um, but, yeah, from where from where they were last episode to where they are now, we've made a huge leap. Um, and, you know, I'm really proud of this team. I'm, uh, you know, proud of the guys for stepping up. Uh, whatever embic has been telling them has definitely been working. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just a, a, a good game to rally, good game to hang our hat on. Um, and I hope to see more of this, more of this type of game moving forward. Yeah. Um, another just really quick thing I need to mention is the fact that we had so many people score this game. Like eight goals, you'd assume that maybe it would just be like one or two people just having a great game. But we had four or five different scorers. Like that just shows how good our guys are, like sharing the ball and not being um, and not hogging it, which is never good to see. Mm -hmm. So I think this was probably the best game in terms of scoring I've seen in a while from the Zips team. Eight goals is just ridiculous in college to begin with. One, one of the most fun games I've ever seen. Yeah, it was insane. The energy was amazing. Um, so yeah, um, now we are going to go into our first commercial break. But after that, we're going to talk Zips Volleyball. So stay tuned. You're watching ZTV. Jason, let's go see your room. What do you think? We kept it a little spare, so you can decorate it how you like. Dinner. Go. Excellent. Soccer is fun. Yeah, I saw you guys out there. We're in the room. We're in the room. Welcome back. It is now time to talk some Zips Volleyball, so let's send it over to Mary, who took a look at the first game of the two-game series against Ohio. Hi guys, it's Mary with your ZTV Sports Report, and today I'll be talking about the volleyball team. I'll be covering their most recent game today, so let's see how they were doing. In their most recent match, the Zips were at home taking on Ohio University. The game marks the first game of the MAC play. Looking at the game, Akron won its first set, 25 to 21. Then we lost the second set, but following those losses, we were able to gain back momentum and win sets three and four. This led the Zips to win three sets to one. Leading the Zips this game with a hitting percentage of 500 was Carliana Jones with seven kills. Emanuela Cristalou had a great game too with 15 kills, a hitting percent of 227 and three digs. The Bobcats were led by Anya Orcheska with 17 kills and 3 digs. Kim Hunt was next up in stats with 14 kills herself. This was their first game in a two game series and we hope to see them win the next one as well. This has been Mary with the ZTV Sports Report. Go Zips! Thank you Mary. So this Akron team um, had a two-game series against Ohio, which is something new they're doing this season, so they play the same team twice in a row, which mm. I think is pretty smart, just so you don't have to worry about playing them again later in the season. Um, so this first game, 
our girls did a pretty good job, um, won three to one, um, which is nice to see. Um, Carliana Jones just was a star that, um, that night, um, had a hitting percentage of 500, which is exactly what any coach wants from their player. Um, seven kills is amazing. Um, next up, Lauren Baker is just always mm -hmm. a star for us. Um, 14 kills is exactly what we want to see. Chris, Delu Chris Dudelou also had 15 mm -hmm. um, kills, so they were just really firing on all cylinders no matter who we were hitting it, um, setting it to. Um, but for Ohio, we have to mention Anna Orcheska. She was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, this first game, she got 17 kills. That's ridiculous. 17 kills for one person. I didn't think she could top it, but in the second game, she got 26 kills. We just did not have any answer for her whatsoever. Not we thought all. we did for five seconds, and then we were like, oh, never mind, we don't. Um, speaking of the second game, so I can't lie. The beginning of this game was good. Mm -hmm. We were having a good time. We figured it out. Um, we lost the first two sets. Then we figured it out, though, and took it to a fifth set. That fifth set was the any coach's nightmare, really. We scored the first four points, and then we let them go on a 9-0 run. Um, so not really sure what happened. And, I, and we wrote that that game, so mm -hmm. I should be able to know what happened, but I really don't. Like, yeah. I was just like, wow, that was, that was something. So um, what do you have to say? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you, you said a lot there, a lot of, a lot of good points, um, a lot of the same things I was thinking myself. It was, overall, it, you know, it was a decent start to MAC play. You know, we've been playing a lot of, you know, a lot of teams from all over the place, you yeah. know, just like really testing our skills, but we really haven't, you know, had the opportunity to see, you know, how we, you know, match up against these other MAC schools. Mm -hmm. um, and as you mentioned, uh, got, off, got off to a hot start, won the first game of, of the conference uh, season, um, playing pretty well across the board, um, made some really good adjustments. Um, and really cleaned house against um, Ohio in the first one. Yeah. And the second one, you know, it's like Ohio was out for revenge for sure. Yeah, they really were. You know, 25, 25-21, so <laughs> 25-18 winning both of those. Mm -hmm. um, as you mentioned, Ar Archinska, you know, 26 kills. She was all over the place. Um, Darby Ricketts uh, hits, you know, probably one of the hardest serves I have ever yeah. seen. Like, it's, it's terrifying. It's, it's the power and speed. I, I couldn't imagine trying to react to that myself. <laughs> no. And you could tell we were having a hard time, you know, just, just rotating, being in the right spot. That yeah. was really throwing them off. Um, you know, but a lot of credit goes to, you know, the leadership on this team, to Tyson, you know, to really, um, you know, get in those huddles, get in the timeouts, really talk it through. It was pretty evident that yeah. um, that, that was working. Tyson was making some good substitutions, like Gabby Brissett played really well in the second oh, she game. Ridiculous. You know, she's ridiculous. So nine kills. Um, Lauren tacked on 13 in this one. Carliana, you know, added five there. Um, Pursued Lee with nine. She's, um, she's played really well this season um, now that she's uh, been able to stay healthy. Um, and, you know, I, I, hate, I hate to look at this fifth set because this, really, this team really got my hopes up. Yeah. It's like they were down. I wasn't sure. You know, we won 3-1. I wasn't sure if that's how this was going. Yeah. You know, if Ohio was going to take us 3-1 or even sweep us the way it started. Yeah. But, we, you know, we really um, played strong in the third and fourth set. Got the crowd super into it. That stadium was really starting to rock for a yeah. Zips volleyball game. Mm -hmm. yeah, really getting into it, going back and forth, uh, matching them point for point, and then we came out on top. And then that fifth set. You know, we went up, we went up four nothing, and I was like, you know, we've really, um, you know, really turned a corner in this game. But felt like mm -hmm. all the momentum was on our side, and yeah. then you know, just one by one, it was like we were, you know, be <laughs> beating ourselves. I think it was definitely mentally getting it to yeah, us. Definitely. Um, you know, and you know, that's you know, like where the exhaustion leads into this game after yeah. playing, after playing four sets, trying to just make it through the rest of the game. Um, Ohio definitely had the upper hand, you know, yeah. had the mo. Well, it, I can't even say they had the momentum because they really got the. They did not. They, re they really get. They earned the momentum, yeah. but they didn't have it yeah. in the beginning. R really took it in that fifth set, and then it's like, you know, we might have another back and forth one, and then yeah. they just kept going, and you know, left us in the dust, and it was, it was an unfortunate loss, um, and and one that I was um, really hoping we were going to pull through in, but you know, yeah. still still sitting one one um, at the start of conference play here, just middle of the road. Um, which puts us in a good spot because if we can um, really we just have to you know maintain where we're at now yeah. um, just right on the inside of uh, the tournament yeah. so just if we can uh, just continue to to work together um, to gel there's 
um, as you mentioned, you know, off camera before this, there's a lot of stars on this team. This yeah. is a very good volleyball team. You know, we're in a, in a really good conference. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, you know, a lot of other stars across the board. Um, you know, like, but you know, Melissa Torre, Lauren Baker, Carliana Jones, Ellen Kennard, really up and down the roster. Yeah, it's hard to find a flaw. And then even when I think about that, I forget about Vitascova again. Yeah. Um, and it's like there's just there's so many options on this team that this can be a really scary team when they yeah. put it all together. And we've seen that happen. Mm -hmm. We've seen them. We've seen the dominance. And um, I expect that to continue. Tyson's really got the team trending yeah. in the direction we want to go. And uh, really, we just got to we just got to keep doing what we're doing, believing in ourselves. And uh, I think that'll take us very far. Yeah, I think the biggest thing this team needs to do is just learn how to win those long rallies. Mm -hmm. That was one of our biggest issues as we would go into those long rallies and then we would lose it. And those are what we need to win to be able to win more games. Mm -hmm. um, so now we are going to go into our second commercial break. But after that, let's talk some women's soccer. You're watching ZTV. <laughs> 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 what is it, Julia? Why are you so excited, honey? Oh, oh do you, do you want to use your talker? Uh, oh. With Julia's autism, using a talker can help her find the words she wants to say. My dog. Oh, you want to do something with Rose, Julia? Play ball. Oh, do you want to play catch with Rose? Oh. I think Rose is excited to play catch, too. <laughs> oh, Julia, you show us so many different ways to talk together. <laughs> oh, and play. Good catch, Rose. <laughs> okay, give give Julia the ball. There you go. Okay, throw the ball, Julia. Oh, for Julia's family, early screening for autism made a lifetime of difference. Find out more at screenforautism.org. Okay, Julia, there you go. Oh, another good throw. That's the way. <laughs> Yeah! Bam! Elmo! Oh, hey, Julia! Are you ready to play band with us? I'm gonna play my clarinet. And Elmo's gonna play his drum! Drum loud! Oh, well, you know what to do, Julia. Hi, Julia knows! Mm -hmm. With Julia's autism, loud sounds can be too much. But she still loves to make music! <laughs> play band! Early screening for autism can make a lifetime of difference. Find out more at screenforautism.org. Welcome back. It is now time to talk Zips Women's Soccer, so let's take it over to Zach and see what he thought about their game against Ball State. What's good, Zips fans? Zach Leininger here, and today I'll be covering the Zips Women's Soccer team's recent matchup against Ball State. Akron came into this game with a record of 5-2-2, two two, looking to earn their first conference win of the year. The Cardinals did not make things easy on the Zips, as they enter the contest with a 5-4 record of their own and put pressure on Akron's defense from the jump. Ball State struck gold first, finding the back of the net in the fifth minute of the game off of the foot of Addie Chester, following passes from Avery Fenchel and Emily Roper. From there, the Zips did their best to even things up, but the aggressive defense of the Cardinals limited the Zips to just two shots in the first half. Additionally, Akron was met with a number of fouls from Ball State, making it even harder to score, and the game was sent into halftime 1-0. The second half went a little better for Akron as they were able to log six shots, but once again were unable to score a goal. Penelope Quirinye did a great job for the Zips in the box, saving six shots and keeping the Cardinals at bay. The Zips finished the game with eight shots, two of which were on goal, and Ball State finished with 13 shots, seven of which were on goal. This game marks the third straight loss for Akron and leaves the Zips scoreless in conference play. Up next, the women's team will head to Toledo to take on the Rockets as they look to turn their season around. This has been Zach Leininger with the ZTV Sports Report, and as always, go Zips! women's soccer team just is completely imploding at this point. Mm -hmm. well, there's really no better way of stating it. Um, we played three games in conference. We have lost all three of them. 
um, given up four goals in them, and we haven't scored a single goal. Um, I'm not really sure what really happened. Um, I'm really scared for them, not going to lie. Um, it's a coach's nightmare at this point that we just keep losing. Um, poor Penelope. Our goalie was just seeing goal after, I mean, seeing shot attempt after shot attempt. Um, they had um, seven shots on goal. She was able to save five, so good for her. At mm -hmm. a certain point, she's going to get tired. Um, and I think it just came down to the fact that our defense was just struggling. Like, they weren't used to seeing that many shots. Because mm -hmm. in the previous games, like, they, like in non-conference, they really weren't seeing that many. Mm -hmm. um, so I think our defense just needs to gel a little bit more like they were in that um, off-conference um, season. And hopefully we'll be better. Yeah, I mean, it's really tough to see the team trending in this direction. Yeah. Um, judging on how they've started conference play, it seems like we're, on, I guess, a little spooked. I don't know if that's the best way to say <laughs> yeah. it. It's like we weren't ready for this level of competition. Mm -hmm. I mean, granted, they were playing, um, you know, two of the better teams in the conference, Ball State and Buffalo, um, in, in two of these three games. And they've, you know, really just had their confidence shaken. The morale seems to be down. Yeah. Um, and as you mentioned, they've just really struggled to to keep the ball um, out of their, you know, out of their backfield, you know, out of their off their side of the field. Um, and it, that, that makes it really hard on not only Penelope, but on the team as a whole, because, you know, you're wasting all that energy on your side and you run around trying to get it out. And um, then that makes it even harder late in the game to advance the ball further. Mm -hmm. uh, and you guys, you mentioned they had 13 shots seven on goal we had eight but only two on goal mm -hmm. and it seems that we're um lacking um i guess really that fire that um aggressiveness that they had um and as i mentioned in the last episode that was one of the things i applauded this team for was how aggressive they were how many shots they were getting up how efficient they were being on goal and now it's like we're we're trending in the wrong direction and really i think what this team needs is um you know these next next couple games especially in the next game um, they really need, really need one of these games, you know, as a confidence builder, just to, um, you know, to take a deep breath, to, to, to really lock in yeah. and focus on, focus on what um, allowed them to be successful in the non-conference games, which was, you know, them communicating really well, them being aggressive, keeping the ball, you know, on the other, on the other end of the field, uh, making Penelope's job easier. Um, and it's like everything that they were doing right, they're now doing wrong. And it's like we're trending in the wrong direction. It's like, at, you know, at some point, you know, Simon, Eddie and the rest of them have to, they got to pump the brakes. We have to put a stop to this at some point yeah. before it gets worse. Because um, as we as I mentioned with the volleyball team, this women's soccer team is really a similar, in a similar position. It's like they're um, very good players across the board. We've seen them have a lot of success. And now it's just they're, they're struggling and, you know, they can't get out of this rut. Um, and as, as I mentioned, um, you know, in, in a previous episode, the, this team really might be the men's soccer team from last year. Yeah. Now they, they went undefeated in conference play, um, and, and they went undefeated going into conference play. And then since then, you know, they've, uh, they've really struggled 0-3, and, and that's what happened to the men's team. They really struggled, um, barely made the conference tournament, and then were knocked out early uh, in, a, in, a, in a season they should have done better in. And I'm hoping that this isn't where the women's team is going because they're, they're far better than what we saw in this game. Yeah, um, I think all that's left to say is that we really just need some more wins. Mm -hmm. um, so that will be it for today's episode. Um, don't forget to follow us on Instagram and X as VTV Sports and on YouTube as VTV Sports Report. As always, I'm Megan Williams. And I'm Zach Leininger. Thank you for watching and go Zips! This program was produced by ZTV at the University of Akron. Do you want to gain experience in video production, professional social media, or working with real clients? Visit the UA School of Communications online or follow us on social media to learn more. ZTV, make media, make a difference.